Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers panhandling, identification laws, and reasonable suspicion, and is brought to us by Honor Your Oath Civil Rights Investigations Channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Sometime around December 1st, 2020, YouTuber and First Amendment auditor Jeff Gray was standing on a public sidewalk outside of the Citizens First Bank on Main Street in Lady Lake, Florida. Mr. Gray was holding a sign that read, God bless the homeless, and was spreading this message to other citizens as they passed by. Eventually, multiple citizens called the Lady Lake Police Department and reported Mr. Gray's conduct as suspicious and accused him of panhandling. Look at the sheriff's office, Lacey. Yeah, I tell you, Lacey, this is Citizens First Bank here at 1129 Main Street. Okay. We have the bus terminal across from our drive through here. And we have a gentleman out here with a hoodie on, shades, holding up a sign. The girls say something about homeless. Um, the girls are feeling very eerie. The girls are just very worried. We only have one in there now. It's and the sign, was he a black male, you said? No, he's white. And it said something and about being homeless? I think so. That's what the girls said. I can't see it on the camera. Okay. okay. I have their call in for you, so it's going to be out there shortly. Hey, County Sheriff's Office on. Yes, at the uh, intersection of um, Carabella and Page Place, there's a white male begging for money, carrying a sign. Okay, see white, black, or Hispanic male? A white, white male. Okay. He has a knapsack on his back, dark clothing. Okay, I'll let the officers know. A short time later, Officer Clark of the Lady Lake PD arrived on the scene and confronted Mr. Gray. Bear in mind that the text you will see on the screen is from the original video. God bless the homeless. People are calling and saying that you're screaming at people or something like that. God bless the homeless. Are you yelling at people? God bless the homeless. Do you have a license with you? Pray for the homeless this Christmas. Do you, you have a license with you? I can't hear you. Can you speak up? Do you have a license with you? God bless, the, card? God bless the homeless. Officer Clark tells Mr. Gray that his actions could constitute panhandling. Section 316.2045 of Florida's Criminal Code provides that citizens can be cited for a non-criminal pedestrian violation if they obstruct the free, convenient, and normal use of any public street, highway, or road. If a citizen causes the obstruction with the intention to solicit, they can be charged with a second-degree misdemeanor. The sidewalk, where Mr. Gray is standing, is considered to be part of the street under Florida law. For an individual to violate this statute, they must create an obstruction by impeding, hindering, stifling, retarding, or restraining traffic or passage thereon, by standing or approaching motor vehicles thereon, or by endangering the safe movement of vehicles or pedestrians traveling thereon. Although Mr. Gray was standing on a public sidewalk, he did not appear to be obstructing vehicles or pedestrians in any way. He even moves further off to the side when he sees a pedestrian coming down the sidewalk, while Officer Clark remains in the middle of the sidewalk. Mr. Gray also was not requesting money, as his sign simply said, God bless the homeless. And his verbal statements were limited to sentiments such as, God bless the homeless and pray for the homeless. Even if these statements could be construed to be solicitation by passersby, there is no evidence to suggest that Mr. Gray's actions caused an obstruction. God bless the homeless. You got an ID card with you? God bless the homeless. Is that going to be a no? God bless the homeless. So you going to get out of here? God bless the homeless. Are you asking me to get out of here? You have an ID card with you? God bless the homeless. That's not what I'm asking. God bless I'm the homeless. I'm asking you if you have an ID with you. Pray for the homeless, Mr. Christmas. What's your name? God bless the homeless. What's your name? God bless the homeless. If I run that name and it doesn't come back to you, you do realize it's false name to Leo, right? God bless the homeless. Officer Clark repeatedly asked Mr. Gray to provide his name and identification. According to Section 901.151 of Florida's Criminal Code, also known as the Florida Stop and Frisk Law, law enforcement officers have the authority to temporarily detain someone to ascertain their identity under circumstances which reasonably indicate that such person has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a violation of the criminal laws of this state, 
or the criminal ordinances of any municipality or county. This statute is a codification of the infamous Supreme Court case of Terry v. Ohio. Some states have created stop and identify laws, requiring individuals to provide their name or identification when detained in circumstances similar to a Terry stop. However, Florida's stop and frisk law does not require citizens to provide their name or identification during a Terry stop. Even if it did, there was insufficient evidence for Officer Clark to have a reasonable suspicion that Mr. Gray was committing a criminal offense, as there was no evidence of obstruction or solicitation. Officer Clark also suggests that Mr. Gray could be arrested for providing a false name to a police officer, since he responded, God bless the homeless, when Officer Clark asked his name. Section 901.36 makes it a first-degree misdemeanor for a person who has been arrested or lawfully detained by a law enforcement officer to give a false name, or otherwise falsely identify himself or herself in any way, to the law enforcement officer or any county jail personnel. Therefore, if Mr. Gray had been lawfully detained on a reasonable suspicion of criminal activity, there may be an argument that he provided a false name, although a reasonable person would likely conclude he was refusing to give his name instead of providing a false one, and a court would likely agree. However, since Officer Clark did not have sufficient evidence to reasonably suspect that Mr. Gray was committing a crime, this statute does not apply. What's wrong with you, man? Why are you doing this? God bless the homeless. Listen, this could be really easy or really difficult. Mm -hmm. And you're making it really difficult right now. God bless the homeless. Why? Pray for the homeless this Christmas. I right? understand, but you do realize that, you know, you standing here with a sign like that and yelling at people or something like that, they think you're panhandling. God bless the homeless. Shortly thereafter, a second officer, Corporal Higgins, arrives on the scene, and Officer Clark walks away, presumably into the bank. Mr. Gray engages in conversation with Corporal Higgins, who shakes his hand and does not question Mr. Gray further. How you doing, officer? Good, yeah, man. How are you doing? I'm great. God bless the homeless. Now you're spreading the word, huh? Yes, sir. God bless the homeless. How you doing? Thank you. Pray for the homeless this Christmas. God bless the homeless. Pray for the Did you guys get a call or something? Yeah. What was the call about? She said someone was out here with some kind of sign, so we just come check it out. See what you were up to. That's it. That's it. You're saying God bless the homeless and pray for the homeless. That's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Spreading the word. <laughs> you're right to do so. All right. We just check out with some people and ask for money and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to do that, they have to have a permit to see. Oh, okay. So that's that, that's the only reason I came over here just to see what it was all about. But if you're just God blessing the homeless, hey, have at it. Bless them. You do it a lot for them? Did you like spread word or something? In the holidays, yeah. In the holidays? Yeah. Help them out. You like charities or something too? Uh, or you just kind of just spread the word? Just spread the word. Just hopefully people will think about them, them pray for them, and do whatever they can to help them. That's, that's cool, man. I think the bank's the one that called, so I'm just going to he went and talked to him. So he oh, said. okay. But if you're in a public area and you're just putting the word, you're not like jumping in a traffic thing, have at it. But so if they, if you want private property, just so you know, I'm not saying you did. But just so you know, if you want private property and they ask you to leave for the business, you gotta leave. But if you're in a public sidewalk, public area, you're okay. This is a public sidewalk? Yeah, sidewalk. Well, I mean, it's owned by the village, and so if somebody from that representative comes and says something, but other than that, like it's not owned by the bank. Okay. So if you're just gonna be, God bless the homeless. All right, thank you. Y'all take care. Have a good day. Have a Merry Christmas. Okay. Happy holidays. Yep. The Lady Lake officers left the scene, and Mr. Gray was allowed to continue standing on the sidewalk without further incident. Overall, Officer Clark gets a C- for neglecting to conduct a legitimate investigation before assuming Mr. Gray had committed a crime, threatening to arrest Mr. Gray for not providing his name, and for maintaining a relatively hostile and confrontational attitude throughout the encounter. Officer Clark insinuated that he could arrest Mr. Gray because other citizens were assuming that he was panhandling, and instead of conducting an investigation to determine whether or not that was true, the officer decided to threaten Mr. Gray with arrest if he did not comply. Although Officer Clark did not actually carry out any of his threats, this is yet another example of an officer restoring peace at the expense of upholding the law, and this interaction may have had a different ending if Corporal Higgins had not arrived on the scene. All that said, Officer Clark ultimately did not arrest or cite Mr. Gray, and it is impossible to know what he said to the 911 caller. There is a possibility that he informed the bank employee that Mr. Gray's conduct was, in fact, legal once he had more details to work with. But most of Officer Clark's conduct in this interaction was unnecessary and unprofessional. Corporal Higgins gets an A-plus for approaching the interaction with a respectable degree of objectivity, 
treating Mr. Gray with courtesy and respect, and for engaging in a productive dialogue with Mr. Gray instead of immediately assuming that he was engaged in criminal activity. The corporal's response to the situation was calculated and straightforward, and he never made any accusations about the legality of Mr. Gray's conduct. It was plainly obvious that nothing Mr. Gray was doing violated any statutes, and it appeared as though the corporal was able to see that from the moment he arrived on the scene. Corporal Higgins handled this situation exactly how an officer should, and I commend him for setting aside his ego and respecting Mr. Gray's rights. Corporal Higgins should be recognized for his professionalism and fair policing tactics, and his conduct should set an example for all members of law enforcement. Mr. Gray also gets an A+, for remaining calm and collected throughout the encounter, politely refusing to comply with Officer Clark's unlawful orders, and for engaging in a positive and productive dialogue with Corporal Higgins. At no point did Mr. Gray commit any crimes, and nothing he did warranted police contact. The Lady Lake officers could have achieved the very same end result by simply observing Mr. Gray's conduct and informing the 911 caller that he was not doing anything illegal. Mr. Gray handled the situation with poise and did not back down from Officer Clark's empty threats, and I commend him for his respectful but stern demeanor. Mr. Gray is one of the few auditors that I have covered more than once on this channel, and not only does he do a fantastic job of peacefully asserting his rights, but he also has a very creative auditing style. I highly recommend giving his channel your support, and I also recommend taking a look at his videos where he was actually arrested for the very same conduct as in this interaction. You can find a link to his channel in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.